What's problematic about the latest inflation report? What might this mean for November I-bond rates? Plus, why are we considering buying some tips in the upcoming auction? Those are the three questions I'll be answering in today's video. Hello, Super Saver. I hope you're healthy and well. As usual, before we dive in, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS's release of the latest inflation numbers a few days ago, CPIU in May 2023 increased 4% over the last 12 months. Compare this to May 2022, when CPIU increased 8.6% year over year. This 4% year over year increase in May 2023 was also the smallest 12 month increase since the period ending March 2021. The drop in gasoline prices was the most significant contributor to the year over year decline in CPIU. This time last year, many of us were paying around $5 per gallon of gas. Gasoline prices, the gasoline index, decreased by a whopping 19.7% over the last 12 months. All sounds good and well, right? But here's the issue. Even though CPIU shows inflation has come down year over year since the same period in 2022, Core inflation, which strips out more volatile food and energy prices, has been a bit tougher to bring down. Here's a chart showing the 12-month percentage change in CPIU versus core inflation from May 2022 to May 2023. The yellow line shows CPIU coming down. Here's the 8.6% year-over-year change in May 2022. And here's the 4% year-over-year change this May. The blue line shows core inflation, omitting food and energy. And this blue line gives us pause for thought. Core inflation was at 6% in terms of year-over-year change in May 2022, and has pretty much plateaued or stuck there since then. Core inflation increased by 5.3% year-over-year in May 2023. So, according to the White House, the main reason for excluding food and energy from core inflation is that their inherent volatility, as well as the fact that price movements of both of these commodities are influenced by global markets, makes them less indicative of where U.S. inflation is headed. And that's the issue right there. If core inflation is supposed to be indicative of where U.S. inflation is headed, then what core inflation is telling us is that there's really not so much to be celebrating right now because, well, not much has changed with core inflation since May 2022. The recent BLS inflation report indicates that the shelter index, housing costs basically, plays the most important factor in the stickiness of core inflation. So until those costs start slowing down, it'll be difficult to see how the Fed can get inflation down to their target level of 2%, this red line here. Pause or no pause, what's clear is that we still have quite a ways to go to close this gap between inflation, core inflation, and the Fed's target inflation number. And perhaps that's why when we ran this poll with the question, who's still worried about inflation hanging around for a while, even though the numbers show that it's easing, about 83% of you answered yes, you're worried. And while I love numbers and fancy charts, I mean, who doesn't, right? I really don't need numbers and fancy charts to tell me that prices around me in my day-to-day -day life, with the exception of gasoline and eggs in our case, still remain at elevated levels for the most part. And given the Fed's recent decision to pause rate hikes, if you're trying to make sense of inflation risk, interest rate risk, and what this means for an almost generational opportunity in fixed income, be sure to check out our latest member videos as we dive deeper into the world of bond risks and bond investing. In the meantime, let's move on to what all this might mean for I-bonds come November, as well as why we're considering buying some tips in the upcoming June auction. As many of you already know, we started buying I-bonds when their annualized rate was 7.12% with the expectation that we'd hop in while inflation and I-bond rates were high and hop out when inflation and I-bond rates came down. Well, we've become I-bond converts. 
as I talked about in this video, which I've linked below, I-bonds serve a dual purpose for us now as the inflation protected part of our fixed income retirement portfolio and as an ongoing inflation protected emergency fund. And the plan at the moment is to keep adding steadily to our I-bond portfolio if we have the cash to do so. Now, let's talk about the projected November 2023 I-bond variable rate first, and then we can move on to the fixed rate. So the CPIU number at the end of March is the starting point for the November 2023 I-bond variable rate calculation. And currently, we have only two out of the six months of data that we need for the rest of that calculation. Here are the inflation numbers for April, and here are the ones for May, which brings us to a two-month percentage change in CPIU for all items of 0.76%. This translates into a projected annualized I-bond variable rate of 1.52% for November 2023, assuming there's zero movement in overall prices for the next four months, which is unlikely. If we take a walk down I-bond memory lane between 1998, when the I-bond was first launched, up until last year, 2022, this blue line shows the CPIU percentage change between September of the previous year to March of the designated year, basically the semi-annual inflation rate that would be used for that year's annualized May I-bond variable rate. And this yellow line shows the CPIU percentage change between March and September of the designated year. In other words, the semi-annual inflation rate for that year's annualized November I-bond variable rate. In about 70% of cases, the semi-annual inflation rate between March and September of the designated year was higher than the semi-annual inflation rate between March of the designated year and the previous September. Meaning in 70% of cases, the annualized November I-bond variable rate was higher than the annualized May I-bond variable rate in that same year. So for 17 out of 25 years between 1998 and 2022, the annualized November I-bond variable rate was higher than the annualized May I-bond variable rate in that same year. Unfortunately for us I-bond holders of the eight years when this was not the case, three were during or in the aftermath of the dot-com bubble burst, four were in the aftermath of the Great Recession of 2008, and one was during our current crisis when inflation started peaking at around this time last year. Meaning that it's likely, at least in my mind, that the annualized I-bond variable rate come November will be lower than the current annualized I-bond variable rate of 3.38%, given the Fed's inflation-fighting efforts and our personal assumption that we're heading into a recession in the next few months. As we always say, though, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results or events. So stay tuned as we update this table in the coming months with the latest inflation numbers. Now, let's move on to where the fixed rate come November might be headed. Here's three quick refreshers from these two IBON and TIPS videos from earlier this year. I've linked them in the description below for those of you who are interested. The first refresher is that the real yield to maturity on a fixed income investment is a return on that investment that is above and beyond the rate of inflation. The second refresher is that for an IBON, the real yield to maturity is essentially the fixed rate. Because if you've bought I-bonds since May 1st of this year, or are planning to buy I-bonds before October 31st of this year, this 0.90% fixed rate means you'll always stay 0.9% above and beyond the rate of inflation, your real yield to maturity on those I-bonds. And the third refresher is that while no one really seems to know how the Treasury sets the fixed rate on I-bonds, based on our analysis, it appears that the I-bond fixed rate does more or less track the real yield on tips, albeit with a bit of lag time, since I-bond rates are reset every six months only, whereas tips yields change daily based on market conditions and expectations. And here's the updated chart as of mid-June with the real yield on 10-year tips versus the real yield, the fixed rate on I-bonds. 
This yellow line here fluctuating day by day with secondary market trading represents the real yield on 10 year tips. And this blue line here changing only every six months when the I bond rate resets represents the real yield on I bonds. The real yield on 10 year tips has been steadily increasing since the beginning of 2022. And it stayed above 1% since mid-September of last year, with an obvious upward trend since the debt ceiling was resolved. So given where real yields on tips are currently and how they're trending, my expectation at this point in time is that the fixed rate on I-bonds at the November rate reset will stay at least at a similar level to what it is now. If real yields on tips continue to creep up, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an I-bond fixed rate north of 1%. But hey, it's June right now. Anything can happen between now and November. So as always, stay tuned. We'll be tracking tip seals and inflation here regularly to see how I-bond rates might turn out at the November reset date, which is a great transition into the next section of our video. Well, because at the time of this taping, five-year tips are yielding a full percentage point more than the I-bond fixed rate. Plus, if we look at this chart, the real yield on five-year tips is approaching a level that it hasn't hit in more than a decade. But let's look at this 1.91% real yield on five-year tips versus the 4.06% nominal yield on a five-year treasury note. At first glance, the five-year treasury note may look more attractive with its much higher 4.06% yield. But keep in mind that this 1.91% tips real yield is what you get after inflation, whereas this 4.06% nominal yield is what you get before inflation. So in a nutshell, here's what we would need to do to make these two investments comparable. We would have to take the real yield from the five-year tips example of 1.91%, adjust for inflation, which in this case means adding on top of this 1.91% the current inflation rate. Let's use the latest 4% year-over-year inflation number that was just released. And this is the actual rate, the nominal yield for these tips, significantly higher than this nominal yield for the five-year treasury note example. Or to look at it from the other side, to make this real yield of 1.91% on the five-year tips example comparable to the five-year treasury note example, we would have to take this nominal yield of 4.06%, adjust for inflation, this time by subtracting the 4% inflation rate from it, which means our five-year treasury note actually has a real yield of 0.6%, so effectively 0%. Now, the actual inflation adjustment on TIFFs is a bit more complicated than this, and something for another video if there's enough interest. But conceptually, this is how a bond investor should be thinking about the yields on TIFFs versus treasury notes and bonds, either both on a real yield basis, these two numbers here, or on a nominal basis, these two numbers here, not these two here. Also, keep in mind that we are at a special moment in time, as I mentioned earlier, with the real yield on five-year tips approaching a level that it hasn't hit in more than a decade. So at this moment in time, it's winner, winner, chicken dinner for the five-year tips, all else being equal. And if you're wondering why I suddenly switched from talking about 10-year tips to five-year tips, it's because there's a reopening auction of five-year tips that will be announced this week. The auction itself will only take place on Thursday, June 22nd though. The real yield on 10-year tips, the yellow line, is generally higher than that on five-year tips, the green line, because of its longer time to maturity. But that's not necessarily the case in our current environment of uncertain inflation risk and interest rate risk, as you can see here. If the real yield on longer maturity tips picks up though, we may consider going further out. And by the way, as I mentioned earlier, if we have the cash to do so, we'd still like to pick up more I-bonds in October as originally planned. Our goal is to essentially beef up the inflation protected part of our fixed income portfolio a bit more, 
given that the real yield on TIFFs is now moving towards more attractive levels. Now, at the time of this taping, as you can see here, and as I pointed out before, the reopening auction for these five-year TIFFs has not been announced yet. So we are still waiting for the announcement date to get a few more numbers sorted before deciding whether or not to move forward with this one. And if we do go ahead with the purchase, I'll try to post an update on how things worked out on this auction. So that's us and our situation. For those of you nearing retirement, if real yields on TIFFs continue their present trajectory, it may make sense to start looking at incorporating some TIFFs into your fixed income portfolio, along with your I bonds, or possibly even building out a tips ladder. This will of course depend on your personal circumstances and preferences. Everyone's financial journey is different and tips do come with certain nuances and complexities that not every investor or every retiree may want to deal with. As I talked about before, if you want to learn more about tips to see whether they might be a good fit for you, check out these two Ibon and tips videos from earlier this year that I've linked in the description below. The one thing that is clear to us at the present time with rates where they are is that this is truly an almost generational opportunity for fixed income if you're in the right position to take advantage of it. And if you are, I encourage you to check out our latest members only videos and to dive deeper into the world of bonds with like-minded individuals. Check out our channel page or the join link in the video description below for more details. And if you're a super, super saver member already, be sure you haven't missed this latest bonds 101 video or stay tuned for this new one that's coming in a few days. See you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.